16. We got it? Say amen. 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 Hey, guys, so hold on. What was that verse? Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Let us pray. Father. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, once again, God, for letting us come back together, Lord, God, for each and every home represented, Father, for those who couldn't be here, Lord, for whatever reason, Father, Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them, God. Father, right now, all you can do, God, I pray you search the hearts, Lord God, and the lives, Lord God, the men, women, boys, and girls gathered here, Father. God, you know among us who was lost, Lord, who was undone, Father, without you and your son, God. Pray this be the day, the night, Lord God, you convict them, Father, save them, self after mm-hmm. too late, God. And Father, though you can as well, God, I pray, Lord, you just... Lord, have us, Lord God, to worship you, Father God, in spirit and in truth, God, to give you the glory, sir, that you deserve, the honor you deserve, and the praise that you deserve, God, when you deserve it all. And God, I want to thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus, Lord God. I can never thank you enough, Lord God. He laid down his life, Lord God. Yeah. That men, women, boys, and girls, Father, like all those gathered here, God, might have a chance of everlasting life. And for that, I say thank you, Lord, and I love yeah. you. God, forgive me why I failed you, Lord. You the glory. I pray for it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people say it. Amen. 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 Turn around, shake me up your plan for you. Sit down. Say it's good to see you. You know, come outside. Good to see you. 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 Good to
to well, we'll get into that. The Bible talks about what love is, and, and, and he says, I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my voice and my supplication. See, have you ever been in need? Yeah. Have you ever been in need? Yeah. If you ain't been, hold on, because you will be. Right. And the Bible said, in my time of need, in my time of distress, in my darkest hour, the Bible said that the Lord, whom I love, heard me. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like God ain't heard you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I like that David come to the Lord before he made this statement. He said, I love you, Lord. <laughs> and since I love you, I need you to hear me. <laughs> supplication. When I see supplication, because you got to understand something. That all of God's people at some point in your life are going to be in need. Yes. Right. We're going to be in need. Right. Might not be a hungry need, might not be a money need, but we're all going to be in need mm -hmm. from a church from the Lord. Because time to time, it's all meant that all of us struggle, all of us get down, all of us start to question things. Because right. don't act like we're all spiritual here tonight, right. and none of us here have never questioned the Lord. Right. Because we have and yeah. do and will question God. We question God's path in our lives. God's direction. We question God's motives. I thought, well, why did you allow this to happen? But you've got to understand that God loves us and He hears Amen. our brothers and sisters. Yeah. He hears our prayers. He hears our supplication. He knows what we need. And the Bible said, listen what, because, verse 2, He hath inclined His ear unto me, Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Amen. He said, you know what? He said, God hears me when nobody else don't. God loves me when nobody else don't. God loves me when nobody else sees. You know what that's going to pour in your life? God forbid, your family will walk away from you. Your friends will walk away from you. Those on your job will hate you, lie on your spouse. Those will turn and turn their back on you. But God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. God will never quit you. He said, Lord, you are the single best thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm going to stick with you if everybody else does. I'm going to be here where you are. You know what my brother says? That's what we got to do. We got to just stick with the stuff that God is where we are now. If God brought you this far, he didn't bring you this far to lead you. He didn't bring you this far to discard you. He said, I'm going to stick with you all the way to the end. All the way. Because you got to understand, if you go all the way with God, baby, God will go all the way with you. That's right up. He said, my fact, he said, I ain't found nothing else better out there. He said, what he said right here was, he said, Lord, I just got to tell you. He said, you are the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. He said, as long as you give me breath, I'm going to praise you. As long as you give me breath, I'm going to serve you. He goes on with that here. Verse 3. He said, now, Lord, as long as I live, I'm going to praise you. Verse 3. And he said, the sorrows of death compass me. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you noticed that the one thing that Satan tries to vex or attack is our minds? He attacked our minds and our flesh and will get us down, get us out, and get us depressed. He didn't get you suppressed, overpressed, or depressed. You know, everybody going in three. Because he loves to attack. The mind. And here is the thing I got to ask today that you got to understand about Satan. Satan is not God. God has all power and all authority. Satan only has the power and authority that you give him and God allows him to have. That's right. But I got to ask can Satan, does Satan know your thoughts? Yep. Does? No. Not let him know. <laughs> That's why some things, my brothers and sisters, you got to take to God with your mouth shut. That's why remember how Hannah prayed? The Bible said the words come up out of her heart. And everybody thought she was a crazed up drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. And they said, what do you do? She said, I prayed with a sorrowful heart. Her lips moved when nothing didn't come out because it was her heart 
that was speaking. That's why I told you. There is some stuff that you don't need to go to somebody about. You don't need to tell everybody about. That's why there's some things, bless God, you got to keep to yourself. Right. the Lord. Amen. See, I want you to understand. How hard is it to pray without talking to me hard at all? No, it's not. <laughs> The only time that Satan has power is when you open up your mouth and you give it to him. Amen. Matter of fact, Satan holds on to some people's words because he knows if I hang around long enough, they're going to give you something. Yeah. Because they'll come in, what was this? What was that? This happened, that happened. The next thing you know, you're going, man, I've got a, a multiple choice. I can really mess him up. Amen. Amen. But if you don't ever give him nothing, that he won't never have that. Right. And we already know that Satan cannot possess a child of God. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost, where he is, God. Amen. Come on. Come Satan on. don't want no part of that, my brother. I don't care what nobody saying. The weakest Christian out there that's filled with the Holy Ghost, Satan don't want no part of that. He wants no part of where God is. But our mind, the Bible said, is the battlefield. Because most problems start. This right here truly is a terrible thing to waste. It's funny because, and you might remember, the, I can't remember how it goes. The right side, which one do we think with? Or the left side of our brain? You remember that? Did you have that going back in school? Yeah. You remember which one it was? No. I'm going to make it up in. I, I was they, using the other child that day. <laughs> they was, they, the side of our brain that we tap into the least, yeah. that we need the most, we use is 3%. Yeah. 3%. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time, we're idiots. Yeah, amen. We don't use our minds. And when we don't use our minds, Satan can attack us. Well, that's, true. that's why you got to understand it. Is whenever a man or woman goes to sleep at night, a lot of times it's the only time God can speak to us. The only time we get still long enough. That's right. But then when you go to sleep with a TV on right. and a radio on and all that stuff, listen to this. Now, whatever you go to sleep listening to, I was failing French. I recorded a bunch of words on tape. I bought me a cassette recorder that would go to the end and flip over. And kept on going, went to bed, listened to French. <laughs> Woke up. I won't say I can speak it to nobody else, but I know the stuff that I did not know before. <laughs> because it was in my mind. That's why if you go to bed watching film, you're going to wake up That's with right. film. But if you go to bed, my brother says, with things of the Lord, you'll wake up with things of the Lord. And the Bible said it. He said, the sorrows of death compass me. He just got to say, as long as you let me live, I'm going to praise you. Uh-oh, here comes death. And the pains of hell got a hold of me. Have you ever felt like that sometimes? That man, Lord, God, I feel like I'm just going to die. I feel like hell got my phone number, my address, my social security card, my debit card, my credit card, know everything about me. I ain't going to make it this time. Have you ever felt like I just ain't going to make it? Here David is saying, man, I'm in trouble. He said, matter of fact, hell got a hold of me. He said, I found trouble and I found sorrow. I will not have you to be naive, my brother and sister, to make you think that if you live a Christian life, that you won't suffer trouble and you won't suffer sorrow. Because you will. Matter of fact, trouble and sorrow is part of this life. That's why I thank God that will be one of the first things we leave behind when we stand before Amen. the presence of the King is we'll leave behind all our trouble, we'll leave behind all our sorrow, and it'll be no more. Yeah. He said, but I felt like hell had a hold of me. He said, I felt like I was going down. I wasn't going to make it. Matter of fact, he said this in verse 4. Because see, when you get in trouble, it's good to know who to call. Right. Amen. If termites is eating the foundation of your house, you ain't gonna go to McDonald's and say, can you come out and fix my problem? No. No. Matter of fact, 
You yeah. set the tank, get stopped up, you need somebody to come out and roll on rotary, set the tank, fix your plumbing problem, you ain't gonna turn around and call a carpenter, are you? No. So why would half attack you and you look to anybody else other than Jesus? Why would sin get you down and you go to anybody else other than Jesus? So he said here, he said, man, I was in trouble. Verse 4, then call I upon the name of the Lord. And here it is again. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Cried out to him and said, Lord, I beseech thee, or I beg thee, deliver my soul. He said, God, if you don't show up, if you don't do something fast, I ain't going to make it. And I like this because he knew that without the Lord it would not be done. Right. Healing is not possible without God's presence. Right. Salvation is not possible without God's That's presence. Right. It yeah. is not possible. He said it. He said, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to heal me. I need you to fix me. Verse 5, he said, gracious is the Lord and righteous. He said, yes, our God is mercy. So I like it because every time he went to the Lord about something, he bragged on the very next verse. Because see, you got to know how to talk to God. We can't come to God walking out of orders, walking out of orders. We got to come to God and we got to present our petition to him and praise him ahead of time. Matter of fact, if you remember, whatever Mary, the Bible said that she had a, a bottle of, of high dollar oil right. and the Bible said she broke it right. and began to wash Jesus' feet with it and everybody got tore up. Matter of fact, the disciples said we could have sold that and made some money. But we know the reason they wanted it sold was so they could put that money in their pockets. Right. They said, you could have done that. And the Bible said, Jesus told us said, no. So you got to understand what she did. When she was washing his feet and anointed his feet, she was preparing him for burial, but she also had put down a down payment on livers getting up from the grave. Right, yeah. See, my brothers and people forget about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it took a while for it to come to pass, but you got to understand, if you bank in heaven, you're going to get paid in heaven. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And she needed a miracle that day, yeah. and she already had a down payment on a miracle, and that miracle took place. So the Bible said this. Went on down, he said, God, he said, you are gracious. He said, matter of fact, you are merciful. So I'm about nobody else, but the one thing we need, we need God's mercy. Man, we need the mercy of God. And this is the thing, though. If God shows mercy and compassion on us, and we have an opportunity to show it to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. You know, I said we got asked a long time ago. Guy had retired, and he said, Well, I'm drawing Social Security. He said, I don't think I'm supposed to pay tithes no more. I said, that's the one you know. I said, man, this. Are you saying from this, he's 73. I said, from this point on, you saying you don't want God to bless you no more? <laughs> That's what you mean. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, what God wrote, it's already said. Mm -hmm. I believe that if a dime comes across your hand mm -hmm. that you didn't have when you woke up that morning, mm -hmm. then God is going to release a video. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So when we say dumb stuff like that, we say, Lord, go ahead and stop. I don't need you from this point on. I don't know about y'all. But I need him every day, every hour, all the time, my brother. Said, they ain't been a second of my day I can do anything without God's help. So the Bible said it. Not only is he merciful as he's bragging on him, he said this, verse 6, he said, the Lord preserveth the simple. There is hope for Caroline and him and Redneck because God preserved the simple. Amen. Amen. There'll be more simple-minded folks in heaven. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. right. Salvation is for simple folks. Right. <coughs> Matter of fact, that's why it's hard. <coughs> 
they tell the folks to get born again because <laughs> it don't make sense. But a simple man says, makes sense to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because after all, if I hear playing myself a simple mind beside myself, <laughs> and when I see that, not only was Jesus a servant when he came, but he was simple minded. Yeah. You'll never see in the scripture Jesus talked above who right. he was around. Amen. He never did. Amen. He always come to whoever's level he needed to be. That's right. If he come up to a first grade, he went down to a first grade level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he went around a Harvard scholar, <coughs> Mm -hmm. One thing about Jesus, he always kept salvation simple. Yeah. He always said something like this, whosoever. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Whomsoever. Right. Believe. Simple words like that. Mm -hmm. Because words like that include everybody. Yes. Right. Uh, And as David was going on, he talks about God's mercy, talks about his compassion. He says, gracious Lord, you are something else. He said he preserved the simple. He said, I was brought low. Low. You know where God saves people at? When they're down. That's right. Come on. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Because he didn't find you on the street in the ghetto passing out Bible tract when he saved you. That's right. Come on. I fact, most of us when he found us ain't even worth talking about in here. We'd be ashamed. Yeah. Right. But David said, when I was at my lowest. Mm. See, that's the thing about God. It don't matter where you're at and what you've done and where you've been. He knows how to get to you. Amen. He knows. They say they still still certain areas and continents and places in this world that man has never been. I know one it has. Because he made it. Yeah. Matter of fact, let me tell you something about the power that this man has. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this boy went to college to learn a foreign native, native foreign language. And said it language was of the bush people what they was called he said i studied that language i got that language down pat and he said after three years i could speak it good and said i got ready to go overseas and, and to the what they call the dark continent he said well the gospel had never been taken but see you gotta understand something jesus can go where nobody can That's go right. Right. amen he ain't got sneak in the back door. He come in the front door. He said, when I got there, he said, the guy took me three miles up his river and said, you go across it, you're on your own. He said, I said, on my own. He said, yep, you're on your own now. We don't go with no father than this. He said, because nobody's ever gone from this point on, everybody's back. He said, I got in this pool of water. He said, I started going across the river. <laughs> So I got across and I was holding the word of God up the whole time. He said, I don't know what was going on. And he said, I want to see if everything in this book, everything it said, everything God had told me was true. He said, I heard the awful bunch of screaming and hollering. And I got halfway across that river and said, when I stepped out, he said, here come a whole tribe of what they call the bush people or wild people. He said, they come up at me. And he said, the, the two guys that had me, they had to back across the river, offered no help at all. And so they just gonna watch me die. He said all them men come running at me with spears, knives. He said they had bones in their nose and their hair. It looked like friends, almost like cavemen. And he said the next thing I know, he said I closed my eyes and held the Bible up. He said when I looked back up, all the spears was on the ground. He said the knives was on the ground, and all them men was turned around and was running the other way. Amen. He said, I thought, what in the world? He said, I turned to look across the river, and that was gone. 
He said, never find out what happened. He said, I went back a couple years later. He said, we built a school. He said, while building that school, he said, we actually went across, had a relationship formed with them, and said, I got to meet the captain of the Bush people. He said, I got to talk to him and said, I asked him, why did you not kill me that day? He said, all your people was upon me. He said, well, because I had the Bible up. He said, that man said, we didn't know what that book was. <coughs> he said, what because I was white? He said, no, we hate white people. He said, well, why didn't you kill us or kill me? Here's what he said. He said, my men come up on you and said, we was going to kill you and hang you up. He said, but when that man in white stepped up from behind you and draw his sword out, he said, there was a man behind you almost eight foot tall. He yes. said he was dressed in white, said he had a sword swinging back and forth. He said, we had no choice but to retreat. Let the fight another day. Yes. He said, I didn't take nobody with me. He said, you, <laughs> you got them straight. You might not think you got nobody, but I'm going to tell you, baby. Yeah. They can't nobody fight for you like God can. Yeah, that's right. That's right. God was already there, just like he's already in your next situation, already in your next time, already in your next problem, just waiting on you. My brother and sister, no one in Shadrach, right? me, shut the bed, go and throw it in the fiery furnace. They come out, so they were falling in there. The angels were not going to even go there. They yes, said, why are they falling there? And the Bible said they opened it up, brought the men out, Shadrach come out, me, shut the bed, go come out. And that king said, was well, they not four? Where's that fourth man at? I couldn't tell you that the fourth man is still in that fire. Because they don't yes. come a time you're going to need it. They don't come a time I'm going to need them. They don't come a time you're going to need them. You're going to need them. You're going to need them. And he's still in that fire. He's still walking around. He's still God. He's still Lord. And he's still able to save and deliver his children. Yes. 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 The Bible says that when they had the fire, the Bible said they were going to have to go through the fire. But the Bible said, if David was going on down, he said this. He said, I was brought low and he helped me. Verse 7, he said, return unto thy rest. He said, you can sleep well knowing that God is on watch. Right. Whenever a man or woman is born again, mm -hmm. you'll never be closer to God than you are at that very second. Right. Uh, until actually in his presence. But I'll tell you something. When I have, nobody else might I never need to be restored. Right. But when I do some serious confessing to God and God takes a hold of me and tells me how much he loves me and how much he cares for me, I want to tell you, it just makes me feel a little better about myself. It, it, it just makes my sleep be a little bit better. It just makes yeah. my life be a little That's bit right. better. It's just something that he'll do to you, my brothers and sisters, yeah. that when you get back at one with him and he can be one with you, what well, the Bible says is, he said, return unto thy rest, O oh, my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee for thou hast the Lord verse 8 the Bible says thou hast delivered my soul from death you got to understand how can our soul be delivered from death because our soul is the one thing that Satan longed for because when a man or woman is born again that's what inside of us gets fixed our rest don't get fixed but our soul, our spiritual man, Amen. is what that Jesus saves. I don't know nobody that wants to spend eternity in the body we're in right now. Right. That's right. You can hear my name make my noise. One day I won't do that. <laughs> Our bodies is wore out. Yeah. <laughs> if they ain't wore out, they're they on the way. Right. They're on the way. Matter of fact, it's funny because the doctor told me, he said, I said, what's wrong with my knee? And they done an MRI, give me a shot, all this bunch of mess. said, we got a crack bone in it and fluid filled it up. And he said, so basically, he said, you got degenerative patella. I said, what's that mean? Because <laughs> that didn't do me no good. It didn't sound good. This is what he said. He said, you got old man's knees. Right. I said, what's that mean? <laughs> he said, that means this time we can get by without surgery, but you need a knee replacement. Yeah. And I said, I think I'll pass on that. 
But you got to understand our bodies is wearing out, guys. Yes. Breaking down. That's why the Bible says, my soul, the Lord hath dealt bound for me. He hath delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Mm. Now, it's something how the older that we get, yeah. we get fragile. Mm -hmm. yeah. fragile. That's what he got. Matter of fact, it's funny because the things that used to not bother us, you talk about your tears. Now they break our hearts. Because you have to understand that when God saves you, He puts a new person inside of you. Yeah, he does. So you start crying and sobbing and yeah. sobbing over stuff, yeah. then you start never bothering you. Right. Yeah. Now it'll bother you that your neighbor's going to hell. Yeah. But yeah. before you got saved, you can care less. Because yeah. you was going with it. But when he saves you, he puts a new man or a new woman on the inside and changes your thought process. Amen. As a matter of fact, I tell, well, y'all know I'm pretty emotional person. I will cry in a heartbeat. Yep. And have a heartbeat just to cry. Mm -hmm. And my wife said one time, she said, well, you stop. She said, when God saved you, he turned you into a girl. <laughs> so you cry all the time. The Bible says there's coming a day yes. that God will wipe our tears yeah. away. Yeah, yes, yes. There's coming a day yeah. that the feeble will be strong. Yeah. That's why there's coming a day where the lame, bless God, don't run all over God's city. Yeah. There's coming yeah. a day where the blind yeah. is going to see like they ain't never seen. There's coming a day where this poor, poor yeah. old body of scripture said there's coming a day that corrupt is going to lay down corruption yeah. and put yeah. on incorruptible that mortality yeah. might be swallowed up by life. They're coming a great getting up day for us. I don't know about nobody. I am excited yeah. on the fact that Jesus, hey, not only did he change my heart, they're coming today, he's going to change everything about me. Yes. Amen. So he said this. He said in verse now I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. He said, because of all his problems, because of all his stuff, he said, I will not be ashamed. I refuse to be ashamed of Jesus and the fact that he is my Lord and my Savior and has saved me. I refuse. If God's people would back on up and refuse to be ashamed, maybe something different would happen in the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? What would God do if we would refuse yeah. to be ashamed? <laughs> refuse. We cannot settle for anything less than holiness and be pleasing unto God. Yes. He said this. He goes on down and he says, <clears throat> verse 10, I believed. Therefore have I spoken. It's hard to really talk about something that you don't know about. That's right. That's true. Let me change that. It's hard to really talk about something and be convincing mm -hmm. if you don't really know about That's true. something. Because I said, well, everybody can talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. But everybody don't know Jesus. That's right. He said, I he said, I believe. And therefore, since I believe. I spoke it. And because of that, he said, I was greatly afflicted. What he said was, he said, I stood. I had a backbone and I spoke the truth of the word of God. And because of that, I was afflicted. You got to understand that if you stand on the word of God, you will be afflicted. Yep. You stand on the word of God, you will be attacked. If you stand on the word of God, you will be ridiculed. But you just got to know if there's anything in this life worth standing on, the solid rock Amen. is one of them. Amen. He said, I was greatly afflicted. Verse 11. He said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. <clears throat> Matter of fact, he said, everybody had come up against me. Because no doubt, he had people coming up trying to discourage him from serving the Lord. Right. People saying, if you really love God, why would God let this stuff happen? And finally, there'll come a point where you'll have enough. So that's another thing as well. There'll come a point, every, part, every one of us got a breaking point. 
Some of us might be a little more than others. But everyone's got a breaking point. And there'll come a point where you'll get pushed and you'll get pushed and you'll get pushed. And there'll come time you got to push back. Amen. They'll take away this right, this right, this right. Then you can do that. There'll come a point where you got to stand up and start fighting back and say, enough is enough. He said, all y'all jokers are lying and going to hell. That's what he was saying. All of you. He said, all of you wrong. He said, if you don't believe that God is on the way, you're wrong. I still believe today, 2016, if you don't believe Jesus is the only way, you're wrong and you're going to hell. Amen. That's right. He said, so what shall I render to the What can I give to the Lord, he said, if I was benefits toward me? <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? What can we give God to pay him back and exchange what he's given us? You ever sit and thought about could you ever do enough? No. Mm -mm. Never. No. You could never do enough to repay God. So he has one request. And you must understand he's talking to born again folks here. He said this. I will take the cup of salvation mm -hmm. and call upon the name of the Lord. He said, I'm choosing Jesus. Mm -hmm. I encourage men, and women, boys, and girls today, you better choose Jesus. Amen. Choose him over family, choose him over friends, choose him over job, choose, him over right. choose Jesus over the world. He right. said, I'm going to take salvation. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, verse 14, now in the presence of all his people. Right. Now, here is where things get tricky because we are good at making promises in the night time, yeah. in the dark time, yeah. when nobody else ain't around. And God show up and deliver. But what he's saying is, he said, I'm going to do exactly what I tell God I'm going to do. Right. And matter of fact, I like what he says. Because he said, I'm going to do it in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. In other words, he said, I'm not going to live for Jesus in the shadows. I'm going to live for him in the light. <laughs> I'm not going to live for Jesus just at church. I'm going to live for Jesus at home. I'm going to live for him at school. I'm going to live for him at work. He said, I'm going to do it in front of everybody. I told him, oh, that's what's wrong now. All God's people going to undercover. Yeah. <coughs> About time to blow your cover. <laughs> and come out for it too late. That's right. He said this. Verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Yeah. I tell you me, that when one of his Dies, God lied. That's right. Everybody was tore up when Stephen died. He was stoned to death. No. God was up in heaven going. Come on. Come on in. Precious, the Bible says. Precious, the Bible says. It is precious. You know why it's precious when one of God's own dies? For the simple fact, it's precious what a child of God has inside of them. Yes. That's why heaven won't be complete until the bride and groom are reunited. That's right. Amen. And every one of us has a part at being the bride. Matter of fact, the Bible said it's so precious. To the Lord. You know what? There ain't a whole lot of things in Scripture that ever says it's precious to the Lord. That tells me that should I die, mm -hmm. it's going to mean something, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you die, mm -hmm. you die in Jesus, it's going to mean something, yes. God. Right. He said, Precious. Mm -hmm. Go on down and say this. Oh, Lord, truly, I'm thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bones. Because what salvation does, salvation from God sets a man or woman free. Amen. It sets a man or woman free. Amen. He said, I have truly been set free. Amen. Goes on down and says this. Verse 17. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call Upon the name of the Lord. He said, I will do 
whatever I got to do right. to please you, God. I wonder when's the last time you prayed that. Lord, I'll do whatever I got to do to please you. Whatever I got to do, God, to serve you, that's what I'll do. He said this as well, verse 18, I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of his people, of all his people, excuse me. Verse 19, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of these, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Amen. The thing that God longs for his people is worship. Praise. Amen. That's right. Worship. Praise ye the Lord. Let us stand. Father, serve the Bible for you. I also want to say thank you. God, it ain't enough. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. Your precious son Jesus that died. Overcome death, hell, and grave, God. That a joke like me might have everlasting life. For that, sir, I say thank you. I thank you, God. That you died, Lord God, not just for me, but for all. Yes. For all. The scripture said, Whosoever called my Lord shall be saved. All. Yes. All. And I thank you, God, yes. for the power, Lord God, in calling on that name, Jesus, Father. Don't say what happened to call any other name, God, but I know when you call on that name, Jesus, God, yes. all the heaven moves, God, there's power in that name, Jesus. God, as long as you can, God, pray.